And something else that we haven't talked about for a while is this idea of marginal returns. Now, with any marginal analysis, we're looking at a per unit change. So, for marginal returns, we want to look at it and go for each additional unit of an input, ceteris paribus, meaning don't change anything else. For each additional unit of an input, how much additional output do we get? That's why it's marginal returns. You've got inputs, the returns are your output. Now, it's called the law of diminishing marginal returns. There aren't too many things in economics that are called laws, you have the law of supply, the law of demand. The law of diminishing marginal returns means this is what's going to happen. So it's a concept with which you want to be familiar, and it's going to have more relevance with microeconomics, particularly when we get into how businesses make decisions and the theory of the firm and all that good stuff. All right, now, to diminish means to become less. So we're looking at what happens over time. You keep throwing inputs at a problem, more and more units of an input, your marginal returns are going to decrease. And you think, well, eh, maybe. Here's what happens. Graphically, as we continue to add units of one input, we keep everything else constant because to really figure out what's happening with one variable, we have to isolate it. So in terms of how you know, realistic is this, well, for example, a lot of businesses, the one thing that they can control on a daily basis is how many people they have in their workforce. You know, if you go to the mall and you see a bunch of people standing around in the stores not selling anything, then that tells you that they have too many workers. What should they do? They should go home. And it would save costs because you have too many bodies in the same place. If you have fewer people and the same amount of sales, you know, you got too many people who are sitting around doing nothing. So labor is an easy one to look at for this. Now what happens? Let's say, for example, that you have a McDonald's franchise or you run a little diner somewhere, very small kitchen. Will you have a greater turnover? Will you have more tables that come in, get served, leave? You know, greater turnover of tables in a restaurant means you're making more money. If you have, say, an extra waitress on staff. So, do you make more money with two waitresses instead of one? What happens if you have four or five or six waitresses in your itty bitty little diner? Because the diner's not getting any bigger. The one thing that you have immediate control over is how many people are standing around doing nothing or how many people are working. So, you keep throwing more and more bodies at this problem. And we see initially, actually what happens most of the time is that you see from, say, one additional person that you see your output shoot way up between, say, your first and second waitress. But if we keep throwing bodies at this problem, we're going to see it start to level out. It's going to peak, and then it's actually going to go negative. What happens with too many people? You know, we're going to peak right here, and then it's going to drop. They're going to start tripping on each other. They're going to start getting in each other's way. You cannot continuously increase one resource without changing anything else and expect that you're going to make more and more and more money off of it. Okay? So labor, for me, is the easiest way to visualize this. But your returns, you're going to see really big gains initially. Then it's going to be a little bit less until it's going to actually level out. And then it's going to go, and it tends to drop off very suddenly. Now, if this is your business, and you're trying to figure out the optimum number of people to have on staff, then where are you going to stop? Right here. Maybe that is four people, four and a half people. You have somebody work half a shift. But that's how you want to figure it out. And that's why it's so important to keep track of what are you spending, 
What resources are you employing and what are you getting out of it? Because you don't want to be here where you're just throwing away money. That's where this is relevant. 